So let me tell you, I was I'm a little late because I was I've been like uh, recording the workshop and and then you know it's a bunch and then change stuff change usually i prepare the class but today i wasn't able to prepare so it's fun because then we're gonna do it together all right and so so should we get started hello welcome to wardrobe school here's where you learn how to make clothes to sell or for yourself i'm vanya and today we're gonna uh do upcycling with lace and this is my favorite thing to do, so I'm very happy about it. And I, help, I hope you guys like it too. So let me show you what I have. I, just, I was just able, because I was late, I was able to just uh, pick up, you know, just go through my lace and choose some. But here I am, I made it. <laughs> and by the way, if you haven't signed up for the workshop yet, go ahead and sign up. It's gonna start in two days, two days. Facebook, I'm here tomorrow. I swear I'm gonna change my camera around. <laughs> but today you can just see the the close up, right? So here's the stuff I have, guys. Just you know, you can do lace um, upcycling. There's a so let's talk about upcycling in general, right? Usually, uh, you just there's usually no. There's like a million ways to do things. You can take pieces apart and make a new thing. And you can just like, if you uh, find one piece and just change a little bit, you're already upcycling because you are making that old thing that was probably going to trash into something new. So that's, you know, it'll be like the most simple way. Um, you can play with patterns. You can play with uh, different fabrics, textures. We had the upcycling class the other day. If you guys joined, that was fun. And, um, Who's crying? Someone's crying. Don't cry. <laughs> I'm here. I just put the clothes up because I didn't have the camera there. But anyway, what's going to say hello? Are you guys okay? Um, where are you watching from? Tell me where are you watching from? Tell me uh, something so I know you're hearing me and you are there and everything is good. All right. Oh, Tiffany, <laughs> don't cry, Tiffany. <laughs> All right. So, and then I, you know, I have my ways to upcycle. And um, I like, and lace is my favorite thing to work with because it's beautiful. Oh, from Fiji, you're from Fiji. Chile, San Antonio, Brooklyn, hi. Queens, a lot of New Yorkers. Oh, Marcelli, you live in, in Connecticut. I didn't know. That's cool. People from all over the world. From Fiji. I can't believe someone is from Fiji. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, you're in Coachella, Tiffany. Marilu, thank you for joining. Thank you for letting me know everything is good. Uh, someone's from Oakland. Nice. In California, Florida. My sister is in Florida. Vancouver, awesome, awesome. So, oh, California. So you guys that are in California or whatever in the world you are that's warm, you're lucky because <laughs> I'm in Vermont and it's freezing. It was like minus three Fahrenheit yesterday. I'm like, what? <laughs> and you know, I like to make dresses. I'm excited with the summer stuff. So anyway, um, it's continuing right with when is upcycling so i like to play with lace because i think uh lace is something that it's beautiful it's a classic you know it's very um flattering it, it looks great anywhere right you put a piece of lace it's beautiful you know people who make ceramics and they like mimic mace, uh, lace or they uh stamp the lace i think lace is like it will save anything so it's that so my idea when i mix lace with old stuff is that uh so that for instance this shirt right would go to trash but then if i put a piece of lace it just brings bring it up back up in life so i think uh, that's why i like so much to work with uh lace and i think you know you guys have seen stuff that i made and as much lace i can put it i will so that's why i like to collect lace and so you can find pieces of lace uh, at a thrift store, eBay, the same place we all find old stuff. 
But one tip I have is sometimes clothing, you find I, like garments that are already, um, you know, done like that no one wants. And you can use that if it will be a lace piece and you can cut that piece and apply to your and use for your creations. I had like this uh, one time I was, that was like a couple years ago, I think I was a Goodwill in uh, it's Goodwill outlet, you know, those like, that's great. I don't know if you guys ever been to Goodwill outlet. It's very fun, but it's like a war because everyone's fighting over stuff. You buy stuff by the pound. Back then I was selling more online, like on eBay. And I, I would like to go to Goodwill. I loved it. It's super, it's fun, but you got to be like strong. And nowadays I don't even know how that's working. But anyway, I found in the middle of those bins, a bunch of stuff. This, uh, I saw like a piece of black lace and black lace is hard to find. I might have a piece here, but I don't know where it is. And so I, I saw that piece in the bin and I grabbed it and it turned out it was a shirt. Okay. It was just like this blouse with buttons. And the, and the bottom here was lace, but it was all falling apart. The shirt wasn't, you know, it was not good. So I, I was like, okay, I'll take this and use the lace. And then I applied, I cut out those the lace and applied to a shirt and it's beautiful. It's on my Instagram. I sold that shirt, but it's there uh, on my Instagram. You can see. So, you know, anywhere you find, it could be a curtain. It could be a house, a piece of some something for the house. You take that piece and save it. So I advise you, if you like it, just start collecting it every time, you know, sometimes you see a, someone's house or you see at the store, it might be like, sometimes it's a new, there was other thing too. There was this guy in Greenpoint that sold, uh, he had, for some reason, he had a bunch of um, ho homewares, like uh, tablecloth and stuff like that, that had uh, embroidered. It was old, it was from China. And I know he had boxes of it because I bought a bunch. But it was old. So he's been saving that for a long time. It was like dead stock, right? And so I would buy that. And there was a set. We would buy the tablecloth with all the napkins. And each of them had like embroidered embroidery and lace. And I used that to make dresses. I made a bunch of stuff. It was caught. It was awesome. So just collect and pay attention. Every time you're shopping or everyone, you know, everything that, um, that could, anywhere that could possibly have lace, you should uh, grab it and save it. You never know when you're going to need it. Curtain, if you find curtain lace or like I had that, I guess they use a, a stable cloth when it's lace. I made a blouse. I've, I made a dress that I never finished. Actually, it's here in the closet. I have to finish it. It could be a wedding dress and it's beautiful. And it's just the shape, you know, like it's not about the, you don't need to make like a crazy wedding dress if you have a beautiful material. Uh, and it's, um, this one I made is just, it's a simple, like a classic cut, like a pencil skirt with the shirt and, the and, uh, it's a zipper on the side and short sleeve and it's beautiful. It's going to be beautiful when I finish. Maybe someone can wear it next year in 2022 for their wedding. <laughs> okay. So then I want to show you the pieces I have and I didn't make up my mind yet what I'm going to do, but I think, uh, I kind of have an idea. So let's see. I just want to explain to you like how. How I start the thought when I'm going to uh, apply lace on my pieces, right? So usually, uh, you I don't know if you know, but I had a shop in Brooklyn for a long time and I sell online and everything. So my clothes are pretty much like uh, my designs that I made from scratch, vintage clothing that I sold, resold, you know, buy and then sell, and also those um, upcycled pieces that I did, that I create. And so... And then I had like a thing like that. If it's a shirt that's simple, but it's very nice, it's like in good condition and it's silk or linen or something, then it goes as, as is, right? Uh, uh, just sell like that. But if I had some piece that had some issues, then I would, it goes to the upcycle, to be upcycled bin. And then from that, I worked something uh, to change and save the shirt. This shirt, it was like a, it's a silk blouse that I, uh, look, it's vintage, it's uh, from Nordstrom. Look, Facebooks. And so it was it was like a blouse with the long sleeve and it was beautiful, but it was all messed up on uh, here. And the sleeve was like, you know, it ruined the sleeve. So I went ahead and cut, cut out the sleeve. And that sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. It turns out I never sold it. Uh, and this wasn't even my store, it was at the market in New York, nobody bought it. 
And now I'm thinking, what can I do? Because what I did is just like I just zigzag the, the edge. And I even saved the, the, this part of the sleeve somewhere. So I could use it. I don't know where it is. But I'm thinking I might add lace to this shirt, okay? And then other pieces I have here is just a T-shirt that is also... Uh, I even posted the other day, and you guys are like, can you make a tutorial? Maybe I'll just show you guys how to do this. It has a stain here, so I don't know if it's going to be a good uh, one. But, you know, just a regular T-shirt. I thrift a lot of white T-shirts because sometimes you find those, like, old ones that are amazing. This is, like, a, a big blouse that also could be a victim <laughs> of mine. And then uh, and this also has a stain. This one is not doesn't have any issues. But I still might work with it. And, you know, just a white button up. It's a great one to add lace to it. If you have, you know, at your house, you might have one of those. And then there's this dress that I I started. And it's made of a tablecloth. Uh, and it's, uh, I think it's linen, uh, this material. So it's very nice. Could also work well with lace. So now let's see the laces I have. The pieces I have. And then when I say lace, I know there's, you know, in Portuguese we have names for everything, but in English it's usually, you call everything lace. <laughs> no, I know that it's different laces, right? But um, crochet, for instance, is not lace, it's crochet. But I, I consider lace because that's how, you know, I'm going to work with all that. So, and then I have this crochet uh, ones that are very sweet. And those are the ones that I use to put, um, on shirts so think about it if you have a just a and i did this on sweaters and this is a great idea my customers loved it so you have like a sweater and you want to just do something different and then you apply a piece of lace right there and then all of a sudden you have a switch thing but be careful to not overdo it you don't want to put a bunch of stuff you just it has to make sense right and one thing i learned from this lady what's her name she teaches art online and she says, when you're painting or doing something like that, you have to do it up until it's pleasant to your eye. And I like that concept because when do you stop, right? When it's pleasant. So don't pass the pleasant point, <laughs> be careful. Cause you can really like do too much and be strange. Okay. Or do a lot. You know, if you go and you like mix all the laces together, you can make an entire piece out of that. And it's beautiful. That's actually a plan I have. So this, uh, it's one that I made, I even made a bag. I don't know if you guys saw it. So this is a great idea. If you, and this you find everywhere, everywhere. I think women make a lot, if have made in the past, a lot of um, doilies, you know, uh, for the table or something, crochet. So they all have, there's a lot hanging out everywhere. And then what I did with that, I just sewed around and made a bag and made a little, uh, handle for it and there was a bag and then um i have all those little ones that you could do that and i'm gonna show you a, a cool thing that's what i think i'm gonna do for this one with one of those little ones and then there's the bigger pieces well this is not as big like this which is probably like a table runner right look how gorgeous and that should be, it could be something bigger, right? So that could be a sleeve. Like, you know, you can add two sleeves to something. You can uh, just make the back of the shirt. Imagine just like placing, for, for example, this one, there is a, it's in good condition and it's silk. I could just apply this one right here. Right? And then have this lace back. This is also cool in sweaters. So I don't know if you um, recycle sweaters as well, but you know, if you have like a cashmere, um, a cashmere cardigan, for instance, this would be beautiful in the back, right? And then you cut out the fabric. I'll show you how I do. Uh, the other thing is, let's see. Oh, then there's this colorful one. Look how pretty. That also could be for the back. Or one thing I like to do a lot is put it on the front. So then you make that, you know, but a little smaller. Let me see. Oh, this one, for instance. And I, I think, I feel like this is made for a chair. I saw the other day, you know, the back of the chair, they, they do like a cover and then they do uh, put laces like this. 
but I love putting those on shirts like that. Okay, when it's, for instance, for a t-shirt, this is a very sweet detail that you can just add there. Let me see if I have another. No, another square one, something like that, for instance, right? If I put it on the front of the shirt, and then I would have to dye the shirt a little darker, but look how pretty. Then you change it, the shirt becomes a blouse. There was the, a t-shirt I made. I did that, uh, put the lace in the front, and then I changed the sleeve. I puffed out the sleeve a little bit and then put a cuff that was also lace. You know, you can put those trims. Uh, hey, <laughs> where is the mouse? Hi, Zahara, hi. <laughs> Thank you for coming. And so, and look at this cute little thing that I found at, uh, what was it? This store in New Hampshire that's called Frank's Fabric. If you're ever in New Hampshire, you should go check it out. It's crazy. It, like he sells new fabric and old fabric. And then he has a bunch of those, uh, you know, like trims and stuff. And look at this, it's a little, it's for children, I think, a little horse. So that could be so cute on a t-shirt. Right? Like that, and then you cut it out around. Um, and then there's the, let's see. This is the one I want to work with. Those are beautiful, and those are hard to find when it's like, uh, what is it called? The eyelash, right? And you should, this you usually put it like on, on uh, hems and you can gather it. Or like, you know, those cami, like the underwear, sort of like camisole things, you can put in the bottom or you can put it here or make the strap from it. So there's all sorts of ideas. I, and then the way I think you should always think about it, it's like you look at your, you put the piece on the table and you look at it and you think, where could I place something, right? If it has, if it's like to be mended, if it has a stain, you cover the stain or you, you, you know, switch the, the stain for a piece of lace. And that's kind of cool. If it doesn't have a stain, you just want to upgrade the piece. You can think about different places that you can add the lace to it, okay? Um, and then I want to talk to you which, about the one I want to do now, uh, which is going to be simple but I hope it will turn out cool. So I'm thinking of this piece because there was one thing I did uh, in my shirt, what shirt is it, I forgot, that I cut, I had like a, two rounds, two uh, little pieces of crochet like that. Let me find, like for instance, this one, right? If it was a little bigger, what I did on the other one is I cut, it was a little, it was like big like this. So I cut it like just the rate on the radius. If you are in a, <laughs> did you join the circus skirt class? Because that's where we're talking about that. So this is the radius of the circumference, right? And when you cut, if I cut here and then I cut it here, it opens up and then I applied on the sleeve. That became the sleeve. You can now, if it's a bigger piece, something like this, you can cut it in half and place it right here. Okay, but I kind of want to use this one for my sleeve. And probably for that, and I'm debating whether I do for this one or with this one or this. The color is just not matching. So I might try this one or my dress. Or maybe for this blouse. For this blouse would be sweet. Let's see. So something like that, if I apply it here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do this. And then I'll just turn this into a summer blouse. So I'm gonna crop, get rid of the, the sleeves. Let me save this, put everything here on the side. I'm just gonna cut the sleeves off. And then it's gonna be open, so I have to finish with something, right? And that will be the, the lace thing. And this is really beautiful. It has an embroidered look. It's like a, 
uh, looks like Japanese flowers or uh, foliage. It's really pretty. Look here. Hi, you from uh, UK. Hi, Tracy. I missed you in the last class, Tracy. So cutting it out, just, you know, get rid of this leaf. And then because there's a silk, I'll save those leaves. I can use that for make to make my labels or something or to add to something else. <laughs> How is this time for you guys to join the live? Is it, uh, are you busy? Are you available? Usually Sunday nights. Do you prefer Sunday during the daytime? I know you guys are like from all over the world, but there's, you know, let me know what's your favorite time. I'm not a lefty. No, you know what it is? It's because Instagram, I'm, I'm doing like, my phone is facing me. And it it's, uh, this is my left hand and this is my right hand. But the Instagram mirrors it when it's, uh, <laughs> I'm doing like that so I can see it. You know what I mean? Yeah, those scissors are great. So, okay. So I have a cut, right? So no sleeves. And now I'm going to cut this in the ha I should actually iron it. Let me grab my pad. I'm going to press the this little doily. You know, never cut a fabric without uh, ironing before. Oh, thank you. I don't know your name, but you said thank you for hosting the class. Thank you for joining. It's my pleasure. This time is good? Or, okay, great. I figured like uh, in US probably because everyone is like chilling on Sunday nights, right? Weekends anytime is perfect for me because I work Monday, Friday. Oh, okay, so weekend is good. Elizabeth, oh, great. <laughs> Thank you for telling me your name because I'm always like, oh. <laughs> I was uh, telling Rob the other day, like I like to call people by their, their name, but the Instagram handle sometimes I start saying the name and it's some like crazy stuff, and I'm like, <laughs> so now it's pressed, and I'm gonna cut. Um, let's see. I think I'm gonna cut this way, so I'm gonna fold it in half. And, you know, because it's an old, old, old piece, it's not going to be all, like, even because it's kind of. Weekends. Weekends. Yeah, yeah I always do weekends. Uh, usually I do the weekly class on a weekday. I usually try to do Thursday or Wednesday, but I can do weekends, too. So I cut it here. And then you see how instead of me doing the straight thing, I'm going to cut it around. And this is totally experimental, guys, because uh, I'm, I didn't plan <laughs> ahead. So let's see how it goes. It might turn out weird, but then we add something else. And then cutting. Because I want to do the round shape, right? And then I'm going to sew into my shirt. Let's see. What is the right side? Oh, this is the right side. So if I sew it here and turn it, it'll be like a little fluffy. 
but then I'm wondering if I have to gather it first. I might, not really. Yeah, it would just be like a little detail. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, because it's all raw, I'm going to zigzag everything, all the edges, before I, I attach to it, okay? Oh, it's late in the UK. I'm sorry that you... Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining. I'll, I'll do early. Um, my mom was also like, ah, it's late. I'm going to go to sleep. Okay. <laughs> so, guys, just a zigzag. A tiny little zigzag. Vintage lace, oh my God. That's exactly my plan, to inspire you to use your lace because we keep saving lace. Like my friend Susan gave me like two boxes and I just wanna use them. This summer I'm gonna make a bunch of stuff. And sometimes, this is one thing I do with lace is like, I try to not do some crazy finishing because it's such a delicate thing. I don't want a bulky materials, okay? Why do you zigzag? So I'm zigzag. I do, yeah, because, so I'm gonna play, and that's a pro, like a process I have. I just wanted the pieces to be ready. And then when I sew, I just apply it and that's it. You know, I'm not gonna have to be like folding. Sometimes I do a finishing. The other, I made a shirt once live last year, and then I made I put the lace here and uh, did a fin a square finishing here with a bias like a, it was very well finished. In that case, I wanted to do that, but usually I just try to because you know it it was stiffen your your work if you do like a lot of finishing. So that's why I like the zigzag, tiny zigzag. That's it. Need them a little tighter. Oh, escaped. You know what happened? My bobbin went out. So, oh, hi. <laughs> I'm glad you made it. I forgot your name. So now, how you refill your bobbin? Here's, here you go. You put it here. <laughs> and you grab the thread. This is the most real life uh, sewing class you've ever seen. Like so sewing along. Because it's really, everything is happening. Although the first, when I first started doing this, once I broke the needle during, I was live and broke the needle, I got so nervous. If I break the needle now, I will just change it, right? This is a home machine. This is a, this is a semi, uh, oh, you're not seeing it. But if you look at my other videos, I have this one that's semi-industrial. And this, this, but this one is home. It's just uh, older. So then I, you have to release the button here when you're doing the, the wheel, right? You just follow your machine instructions. But in this one, that's how I do. And then push to the side, and you fill my bobbin. It's good to uh, start. There is in your bobbin, there's a little hole. When you do that, you should put the thread through it and then hold the thread here. I always do without it, but it's not the right way to do, just so you know. Look how silent it is. The Bernina. Okay, that's enough. Ooh. <laughs> Hi, Saf, what's your name? So,
and I clicked and now I get my thread back. There's, there's only one thing I miss uh, when I'm not using my newer machine is when uh, it's the threader, the auto threader, because it's easier. It's kind of stuck. Come on. Okay, now it should be okay. It has to click in there, you know, when you have like this box, uh, bobbin box. There it is. Okay, we're back in business. Zigzagging, just a tiny little edge. hose down I'm gonna do the other one if you just arrived I'm uh, adding lace to this uh, old blouse is a silk blouse and I got rid of the sleeves and I'm gonna uh, place a piece of lace on it it's like a doily that's an embroidered piece actually Just finishing up the armhole. And now I'm gonna uh, zigzag the, the doily itself. Look, I cut it in half and I'm gonna just do, so one edge is finished by their finishing. And then I'm gonna do the other edge with the zigzag. I could also do like, so this machine has a similar, I forgot how this shape is. How do you call this shape? That's like, um, like that, wavy, you guys know? Um, I forgot, but it sh this machine does it as well. I'm not gonna adventure with it right now, but it could, I could be, do that. Scalloped, yeah, thank you. <laughs> scalloped, e scalloped edge, right? <laughs> yes. But that could be a good idea. Although it wouldn't be the same shape, right? But done now the next scallop So now it's finished, it's all like protected. So I just go back to straight stitch and I'm gonna attach to the, to the shirt. 
and see how it goes. And I, you know, I try, and then if it's strange, I'll go and do something else or change it. It's a scalloped edge, right, Lily? Yeah. I see, you know, the comments arrive here later. So <laughs> there's like a little delay. Sorry, guys. So I'm just going to put it here. I, what I'm doing is finding the, the, the um, what do you call, the center, right? So here's the, the center of my piece. I put a pin there. And that goes on the shoulder right here of the shirt. And I'm thinking if I should do, I think I'm going to do the flipping, even though I did the zigzag and do like that. So I just place it on top. Yeah, I'll do right sides together because it's so thin. And then if anything, I do a top stitch. Look, then I pin on top of the thing there and then go. Okay, the reason I did the zigzag is because this edge, I'm not going to, it's going to be loose here. So, and then, you know, the zigzag makes it, makes it for you, makes up for it. Now I'm just going to sew right on the edge. Attaching these pieces together. Oh no. Okay. Take the pin away. And let's see how it looks. It might be weird. <laughs> so yeah, this definitely. Oh, it's sweet. Look. So far. Right? Let me put the other one. So find the center. Right sides together. And there it is. I'm thinking I'm I'm probably gonna get rid of the collar of this shirt because I think there's too much going on when once this thing is uh, finished there. Nice, thank you. <laughs> I think it'd be sweet, you know, it'd be like a little flowy. No, this leave. It's not even this leave. It's like just a little detail. So, first step, it's there, and I think it's kind of cute because just like this cover thing, right? But then I think this this uh, this collar because it's like a collar with the foot and stuff. I'm gonna get rid of it. Watch, say goodbye. And so, the best way to do that is that when you you have to open up this stitch here. See the collar? It's the collar and the collar foot, right? The base of the collar, whatever you call. 
And so I'm going to keep just the, the base because it's more classy, I think, for this case. And I want to get rid of this part. I'm going to cut it. But the best way to do is that you want you uh, open the stitch here, the seam that's right here, take it out, and then sew it back on. So I, it takes too long. So I'm just going to cut it right now so you guys can see. But uh, later, I can still open up, get rid of the extra material, and call and uh, re sew together. Okay, so now it's looking more like a blouse. I could possibly, uh, one thing I'm probably going to do is do a top stitch on the sleeve, but I want to add something else. <laughs> Remember, I said, don't overdo it. I wanna, I'm trying to overdo it. No, it's, I just feel like it needs, it needs something else. So I'm going to add a piece to the back. And that's good because I know you guys, there's a few of you that messaged me when I posted the t-shirt with the lace on the back and you're like, how do you do that? So here's how I do it. Look, this is a blouse, it's already cute, right? It's not that long sleeve anymore. And then I'm gonna place a round thing on the back. And let me see, just go for something here that the collar, yeah, so this is perfect. Or maybe this one. And, you know, I don't want to put it too high up here, so I'm going to just put it a little lower. Find, I, I eye the center. I'm not really like, oh, wow, you know. And then I'll pin it. And that has to have a bunch of pins because you don't want it to move when you're sewing. So I just pin all around it. And that's good. Now, okay, let me unbutton. And then I'm gonna zigzag around and see how it has all this like fringe kind of thing, right? So I'm gonna go a little away from the fringe with a tiny zigzag. And for you guys, you can even see the close up right here. If it's not a bunch of stuff in the front, yeah. <laughs> there it is. So be careful to not sew the label. A little zigzag, very tiny. That's it. And this zigzag has to be tight because I'm going to cut the fabric out. And so I don't want it to, you know, and the zigzag is what's going to say secure the fabric. I might even do twice. Why is it not? Okay. This machine is kind of new for me. I got it like less than a month ago, I think. So I'm learning. But it's very precise. That's what I'm liking the best. You change the button a little bit and it, it, it really makes it's like a car you know you turn the wheel the car really turns and other machines are not like that it's very responsive and this is like a you got to be slow and patient when you're doing this job but it's worth it it's so pretty after And by the way, you see how I do round when you're sewing round shapes, you lift the foot. Look, I'm gonna turn, so I put the needle down, lift the foot, turn a little, put the foot down and go. 
every inch or so, keeping the round shape going. off the pins okay oh it's done <laughs> so now I'm gonna cut it right and I hope my tiny scissors are here because I like to cut with them so if you have very tiny like pointy scissors that's what you want to use for this step and you can do this on t-shirts you know all sorts of uh pieces anywhere you put a little piece of lace people are like oh my god it's so cute <laughs> let me see if i find oh here they are look i have this tiny pair it's not i in new york i have a very tiny one that's uh even a little curvy it's proper for that and so i like but this i have it here so that's what i'm gonna use I wonder how you do that. I'm so excited to sew a heart-shaped Battenberg lace. Yeah, do that. So this is the bat. This is a Battenberg, uh, but it's a oh here, <laughs> but it's a it's a what do you call it? a horse, like a, a ch children horse. Look, that's the Battenberg. Yeah, you just do the zigzag, zigzag, and th and the Battenberg usually is finished, right? So the edges are finished. So you can do it. So I sew the piece there. Let me bring you guys back. Okay, so it's sewed to the piece and now I go on the inside and trim it. I'm just gonna get rid of this. So I zigzag tiny, tiny, tiny because the zigzag holds the, the fabric there. And then afterwards I go and do another zigzag. So I just make sure I'm not grab. I grab just the fabric. Look, the the lace is separated from the fabric, right? And I'm gonna cut the fabric. And I cut it very close to my uh, stitch here because I don't want it to be like hanging. Like, And this is woven fabric, so it does fray, but when it's jersey, you're good. When it's a t-shirt. A t-shirt, if you do like one uh, round of zigzag, you're good. This one, I'm going to do two to secure, make sure it's really secure. And I'm going to cut this end tailor because there's not any end tailor anymore. Okay. And this blouse, by the way, can you believe it was new? I don't know where I put the lid, but it had the tag new from the 80s. <laughs> People donate stuff they don't even wear. All right, there it is. Okay, I cut it very close to the, the edge of my stitch. And here's my blouse. So now I, I'm gonna, let me just press and I'll show you guys the result. But I think I'm still gonna do a top stitch on the uh, sleeve. Let me just press it like it would be at the end. So what it's left is I'm zigzagging the back again and then doing the, the top stitch here to place. And then tomorrow I post a picture, okay? 
when there's a natural light. And this is it, guys. This is how you upgrade a boring shirt. I mean, this shirt was cool. It's not bad, you know. It's very classic, right? Like a, a cream color silk blouse. But there are so many out there. And this one was at the thrift store. Nobody wanted it. It, had, it was brand new. So... It's good to have, give it a new life. And then press the collar. I think we should all make clothes. We should make clothes for each other, clothes for herself, and not buy new clothes anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Marcelli. Thank you. <laughs> Look, how sweet, the sleeve, and then the back. The back is just a little detail, right? That when you're wearing it, it shows the skin a little bit and it's sweet, look. Oh, awesome. What did you guys think? Did you like it? <laughs> You got to Yeah, just upcycle your clothes, sell it, make it, give it away. Don't buy new clothes, guys. Or if you buy new clothes, buy from somebody that or some company that you know it's good and because the the fashion thing is really serious, right? Okay? And I'm here to give you ideas and so I'll see you in the next class. I don't know what I'm going to do next time, but probably Oh, now is the this week is the workshop. I'm going to do be doing lives for I'll try to come up here a couple times or one time at least but i'm gonna be doing mostly lives for my students in the workshop and you can still sign up as the last day i think tomorrow is the last day because it starts on tuesday go to my bio and sign up is a free workshop how to make clothes all right thank you thank you so much vanya movement yeah join my movement i'm like bernie <laughs> join the revolution I'm saying, yeah, this live is going to stay. You can watch if you are watching the replay, by the way. And if you want to ask questions, just leave the comments and I'll respond. You guys are always welcome to send me a DM. And I appreciate you. Thank you so much for enjoying, for joining me. And uh, Facebook, I promise tomorrow I put a new camera. I put the camera in front. <laughs> okay. So I hope to see you guys at the workshop. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful new week. And keep sewing.